is um, the first scenario in troubleshooting. And uh, I'm just going to use this uh, small handheld mini cutter um, just because it's a little bit easier to handle when we're going through this. Um, I would urge you guys to pick up a uh, multimeter uh, or a voltometer, uh, you know, ohmometer, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, this will really help you guys figure out if you have any type of short circuits um, in your uh, line anywhere. Um, I mean, that's pretty much how we're going to diagnose what the problem is. I mean, these circuits are so basic. If your power supply isn't working or um, if your you know, wire isn't heating up for that matter, it's usually pretty straightforward. Um, you know, first and foremost, you know, make sure that uh, you know, all of your uh, connectors are attached. If you're using alligator clips, um, you have to make sure that, um, you know, if these are get because make sure that they aren't touching each other, um, you know, when you're kind of going between your power supply and your actual cutter. Um, if you have where your, um, you know, two wire connectors actually touch each other, you're going to arc through there rather than going to your actual handheld cutter itself. Um, you know, so make sure you don't have anything touching anywhere. Um, one of the other areas that I usually have problems is if you actually took the time to wire in one of those small DC connectors, um, you know, you can see in the electronics part, is a lot of times when you screw those back sides on, it will compress, um, you know, the, the, two, the two metal points together. Um, and that in of itself could be causing a short circuit. So just, you know, I, I'd, I'd be watch out for that or, or make sure you don't have any problems. Um, but, uh, you know, first and foremost, you should have definitely calculated, um, you know, the resistance within your circuit or even tested if you have this made. Go ahead and test your resistance and make sure that your uh, power supply actually has enough wattage, output wattage, um, to power it. You know, I mean, if, if you don't have enough, you don't have enough, it won't do anything. Um, you know, kind of moving on from there, um, the next part is to uh, disconnect your device, um, you know, however you have it set up. Um, you know, it just so happens that I'm using the uh, crimp on uh, connectors because um, I just find those to be the easiest when switching between. Um, and what I do first to start, um, you know, is I look at my uh, DC power supply um, and I just hook up, uh, you know, each of these, you know, one of my alligator clips for my homeometer to each of these to make sure that I'm actually registering an output um, in voltage from, from my power supply when I depress the switch. And I'll, I'll zoom in so you can see. The first thing you want to do, uh, you know, like I said, is make sure you have um, your, allig or your um, you know, alligator clips here uh, coming from your voltometer hooked up there. Um, and when you're looking at these uh, voltmeters, um, they usually, depending on the type that you have, um, you know, this, the V with the little tilde or squiggly line, uh, that means alternating current. Um, and then when you have a V with the solid line and the, and the three dots underneath, that's going to be, um, more, con that's going to be the, the DC power supply or DC voltage testing. Um, so, you know, the other readings around here, uh, just kind of help with your decimal place because these are usually pretty sensitive. Um, you know, so I just turn it to the 200 setting, um, you know, which gets us uh, that reading, you know, a, a single tenth and two decimals. So uh, what we have is 6.4 registering down here. I'm gonna hit the foot switch um, and you can see that we're registering at 6.7. So it's actually putting out a little bit more than what it says. Um, and when you turn this dial, um, you should also see a concurrent increase in your, your DC um, uh, voltage reading on your voltometer. And since the uh, uh, voltometer read appropriately and read accurately as we turn the dial over here, um, we know that the problem isn't with our power supply. So, you know, if it comes down to it where, um, you know, you, you press your foot switch, if you do have a foot switch, um, and you're turning this dial and you're not getting any change on here, well, first of all, make sure you don't have a short, you know, between your two wires, but you might have a faulty power supply. Um, but uh, this one, you know, hey, this one's looking good. Um, so we can kind of move on from there. Um, you know, the next thing that we want to test um, is going to be 
uh, the actual device itself, okay? Um, and one of the things that I'll typically do um, is just disconnect the nichrome wire, okay? And then I'll hook, you know, uh, the one lead on one side and one lead on the other side. Um, and what that does is it tests uh, the continuity from your DC power supply up one arm, across, and down the other way. So if for some reason your power supply isn't reading in that whole loop, then you got an issue, okay? Uh, I mean, somewhere inside here you may have dislodged uh, one of your pieces, um, you know, maybe your crimp on, you know, up here, your crimp on on the inside had come disconnected, um, but either way, uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be the next step for us. Um, and really, you know, when we hooked up, you know, our uh, voltometer onto the two leads from our power supply, we're basically doing the same thing uh, when we hook it up to either of these two terminals. It's just that it has a little bit of a longer road to get up there. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll zoom in once again and kind of kind of show you as we go through it. So go ahead and um, connect your device back to your power supply. Right, and then we'll uh, disconnect the nichrome wire. Now, I rarely disconnect the whole thing. Usually, I'll just leave one side hanging um, and just make sure I, I hook my uh, alligator clip up here. So once again, uh, as we go through it, should be reading as zero. Press the foot switch, and then turn the dial, make sure we're not getting any problems there. All right, we're good. So really not all that hard, you know? Um, you know, this one we know didn't have any shorts. Um, you know, we didn't have anything slip off, but that would kind of be the steps that you go through, um, you know, if you were having a short circuit or if, um, you know, your power supply just, um, you know, you know that it's working, it, it tested positive, I mean, it tested fine, uh, but your wire is still not, not heating up. Um, you know, and if it comes down to it that um, everything's testing out, I mean, when you hook up your leads to either of these two terminals, or terminals rather, and it's, you're still getting a, a consistent reading between the two, and it's probably the wire. Um, either you have the wrong gauge wire than what you think you have, um, but you know even then you should have already tested, um, you know, with your your voltometer uh, the overall ohm reading um, for um, this this particular circuit. So, um, and you can go over to the electrical circuitry diagrams or, or tutorials rather, and it shows you how to test the uh, the ohmage. But it's it's really easy. You just use this. So. Um, other than that, that should help you do your basic troubleshooting. Uh, go on to the next tutorial um, under the troubleshooting section uh, because what I'm going to show you is, um, is when these things top out or if they clip on you. Um, I'll show you what that means and, and what it means for your circuit. Um, so uh, we'll see you there.